the flight. Grey. The sort of day when clouds don't look like clouds. Just a grey high ceiling. No fluffy romantic clouds or dark heavy foreboding clouds. Just a grey duvet covering a grey city. As well as the grey the first day of autumn had brought with it a chill wind, a portent of the winter to come. Gregor pulled his flimsy jacket around him and marched on regardless of the odds stacked against him. If the writing was on the wall, then Gregor was convinced it was written in chalk and with a bit of hard work it could be erased. He moved swiftly, oblivious to the eyes that watched his every move. Not oblivious. He knew he was being watched. He spent his life being watched. But he'd given up trying to work out who were the innocent and who were the watchers. Summer had been hard. Comrades and colleagues had disappeared at an alarming rate. And once they were gone, they were gone. The days of show trials were over. The days of imprisonments or labour camps were over. These days people disappeared into thin air. The state denying all knowledge. Gregor liked to think that they were all together in one large cell, catching up on old times. But he knew deep down that the only way they'd be together would be if their souls had reached the heaven he'd long since stopped believing in. Now he had to get to the airfield. He had to get on the plane and away from this living hell. The plan was crazy. He was going to be smuggled onto the air side of the airport and then slipped onto a normal passenger plane under a false name. It was never going to work, but he had to try, or more than likely, die trying. At the airport, he waited nervously by the staff entrance. He was trying to act normal, but what was normal? Eventually, the door swung open and a huge bear-like man stood in front of him. Gregor didn't know if he was friend or foe. The bear gave Gregor his documentation and led him through to the, through the doors. No words had been spoken. It was safer that way, and anyway, there was nothing to say. The man pointed to a room where Gregor was to change his clothes. Gregor practised the line again and again in his mind as he changed. I think you have the wrong man. My name is Pierre Lejean of the French Consulate. He practised his French accent, but it was not very good. He clung to his new passport and ticket as he waited for the flight to be called. He noticed the clouds had got thicker, the wind stronger, rain was in the air. He hoped the plane would be able to take off in the storm. He didn't need unnecessary delays. He felt sick now, scared, sad, tired, everything. But most of all, impatient. He found himself counting the ticks of the clock that was marking time above his head. Finally, they boarded. The man on the gate looked up, looked him up and down. Gregor's stomach leapt. But then the man waved him through with a cheery, Have a nice flight. Just minutes now and he'd be free to fight the good fight from afar. He'd never wanted to leave, but he knew he had to. The only way the opposition could survive was from the outside. The plane crept around the runway like a cat creeping up on its prey. Slowly, steadily, it manoeuvred into the perfect position to pounce, and then stood stock still, purring gently. The rain had started and was lashing the tarmac, splashing into puddles that were becoming one small lake. Straight, hard rods of rain arrowed to the ground, suggesting takeoff might be a bumpy affair. The cat let out a roar and sprinted gracefully down the runway before leaping into the air in one easy motion. The plane swung left and hit the clouds. It was no longer a cat but a cocktail shaker, shaking up all that was inside. But Greg Gregor wasn't shaken or stirred. He wasn't scared. No, Gregor could relax. In just about an hour, he'd be in Paris.